Hello. I just picked this machine up. And uh, this is actually my second acquisition in just a few days because I recently bought a VV16 from 1913. I haven't featured that yet, but I will very soon. Uh, that's also another beautiful machine. But when this popped up, I saw it on Facebook Marketplace. It was only $300. And I said, of course, that wasn't cheap enough. So I ended up getting this for $200. It looks like a VV17, but the reality is a VV130. Uh, the VV130 was introduced uh, pretty much, you know, right after the 17 was stopped. And it is almost exactly the same machine, other than the fact that it has uh, this special needle drawer, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, this uh, makes it, the, the one fact that really made me want to get this is the fact that it does not have a spring motor. It is one of only 588 ever made, only in 1923 to have an optional electric motor which could be purchased for the low, low price of $40, which was a sizable sum at the time, of course. All gold-plated hardware. Beautiful gold-plated lock escutcheons, the lid locks, and the doors lock at the bottom for record storage. There is some damage to the cabinet most notably, it is missing. Let me see if I can get it to the light here. It is missing pretty sizable amount of trim right there, which can be pictured here on the other side. Other than that, pretty solid. Alligatoring, some heavy scratches on the side. But, you know, for $200, sorry there. About two hundred dollars for about two hundred dollars. I think it's a pretty good deal. It's in red mahogany, so it's the it's the most common finish. I just love this down here. They even took the detail. I can put you down for just a second. They even took the detail here to on the back finish. They even finished. the carving all the way around here in the back. They also took the time to finish this carving, make this carving, also to put gold plated hardware on the box for the electrics. So we have, I'm pretty sure these are some sort of capacitor coil type thingies though i'm not really you know an electrician an electrician or anything but um there's three i think this one's for the lamp this is for the motor this is also for the motor but i think it have may have some you know like it may be for the brake as well and you can kind of put a little stuff in there if you'd like this is the original chart it was missing the cord when i got it but I probably would have replaced it anyway because those cords are usually quite uh, battered. This, this is these are the heavy scratches I'm talking about. These are these are pretty deep too. If you can tell, they're like all the way through to the wood. I think some some substance would have got in here and it just really wrecked it. But you can tell it's the centers bowed out and they were made like that. Just absolutely beautiful. I almost prefer these to the top of the line BV18 just because they're the perfect amount of elegance and in a, in a pretty, you know, pretty small package. It's actually, it's pretty tiny. Uh, the 16 was one of the largest upright cabinets ever made by Victor. And also it has invisible hinges so you see how the hinge it disappears into it and the doors only open about that far because 
I'm tracking in there. Really looks nice. And I, I haven't done anything to it. The only thing I did was open it up, open the motor board up, take a look at the motor. And I put some albums in it, just a few I had lying around. It was missing all the albums, unfortunately. But I'm going to try to find a set someday. That's the tag. Mahogany on the inside, of course, is in good shape. These are for 12-inch albums. One, two, three, four, five. Five 12 inch albums could go in there and a whole lot more 10 inch, which is which is good because you know who plays more 12 inch records than 10 inch and gold plating on that excellent condition. I open the lid now, show you. Finish on top is in good shape, it's pretty alligators, but it's I think it'll it'll clean up. There it is. Look at that, how beautiful. So what really caught me was that it has a dealer tag from the Somerin Company, which is sold pianos in New York City. It has the original turntable felt in excellent condition. Absolutely beautiful. There's some pretty, pretty decent loss here from, from who knows what. There's here on the other side, there's some scratches. I think a lot of this will come off though. This, okay, so this is what I was talking about before. This is the pull-out needle drawer. So uh, the acoustic, or not acoustic, the uh, spring motor versions of this had this here. And obviously the smaller tag uh, of those, the 5,000 130s produced were all were there. And had obviously a crank here. And then they had their tag up here and, you know, a lot of extra space here. But this one doesn't have that. Well plated motor pull knob is still there. Thank God, that's an expensive part. The speed indicator, this is the first machine to use a gold speed indicator. I believe the um, 16, I mean the uh, 17 was. There's some weird sort of paint splatter or something on there. It's kind of hard to see, but other than that, gold plating's in great shape. Has the um, what? I, what I think to be the original bulb, because this is a weird size. Uh, I did. I did plug this in to test it very, very carefully, of course. And the motor didn't do anything, but the motor was 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 pretty uh, gummed up at the time. But when I pull this chain here, that light turned right on, and it, made, it lights up this whole interior. It's going to look absolutely beautiful at night. Control a decal, of course. Now, obviously, the mahogany on the inside is always in good shape. Always wish it was this looked like that, just on the outside. Uh, this is that little drawer. See, opens up like that. Show you what I mean. Take a needle out. A needle on top. There's a needle. And then these are the gold plated screws for the motor. Okay, let me quickly show you here what the motor looks like. I'm gonna need some help with this one because I have never worked on a Victor Electric. I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure this is very close to the same motor as used on the much more common Victor uh, VE-16. So that's our motor. It's very big, very heavy. Uh, and before when I got this, you would spin this governor here and this spring would just kind of wind tight and then nothing would happen. Now, when I spin this, this is just after kind of opening the back up and get some gunk out of there. Now, if I go like this, it'll slowly want to spin, slowly. But it, yeah, that grinding sound, it's it's trying. It's gonna, it wants to feel. Ugh, it's still too tight to turn the center shaft, but it's it wants to go. Is the original tag there? Yeah, so anyone, no, the, the, the original wiring harness, excellent, almost near perfect condition. Uh, anyone, anyone at all who has a Victor Electric or anything like that, please reach out through email, 
whatever, comment, whatever have you. Because I really need the help for this one. I've never worked on an electric Victor motor before. And this sure is a worthy project. Absolutely beautiful. Has the number two in pretty good shape. Gold plated number two. Sounds pretty good. Uh, anyway, it's air it's airtight. Last time I checked, uh, sounds actually really good. I mean, most people wouldn't rebuild it, but I just don't like the look of those old gaskets. So I'm probably just gonna put some slap some new ones in there and call it a day. But yeah, very beautiful machine. Extremely lucky to have gotten it. The only thing is the timing, not so great, because there's another. There was another machine that I had just gotten. And if I had seen this one first, I would have gotten this one, and that's it. But, yeah, that's about it. Thank you.